Welcome back to Continuous Manufacturing Basics. From the last video, we were keeping in mind that continuous manufacturing is recognized by the scientific community and is recognized by the regulatory agencies. So you can grasp the importance of this technology and how it will change the production of medicines in the future. Knowing that, let's now dive into the discussion of batch versus continuous manufacturing. What does this actually mean with regard to the manufacturing process? This means that the paradigm of the manufacturing chain has completely changed, which affects the API synthesis as it does the API drug product production. What do I mean by completely changing the paradigm? Usually, batch manufacturing means that you do a synthesis step first. Then you store and check the quality. You do a crystallization step. Then, again, you check the quality after you have stored it. Same for the drying step. And then you store and check the quality again. Or you do all these steps and check the quality only then. And only then you package and ship it. So there is a lot of storage and this continues when you go into the drug product manufacturing process. If something goes wrong, the whole batch goes to waste. It's not just a small portion. You cannot take out 100 tablets that are out of specification. Sometimes you can possibly reprocess the batch, but still this is a large risk. So apart from the risk of having more waste material, you also have a lot of material in storage between each and every production step. This means that you need floor space in order to accommodate your production processes and the material that you need to store. Continuous manufacturing chains have a completely different approach to batch manufacturing because the material moves directly from one production step to the next, without storage. The different pieces of equipment are directly connected, which enables continuous material transport. So synthesis, crystallization, including product cleaning, are directly connected and work continuously. In continuous manufacturing, instead of storing and testing the material after the process, the material is tested during the process. For this, process analytical technology, abbreviated to PAT, is applied to the different unit operations. Another concept that is reaching interest is real-time release testing, or RTRT. This means that immediately after production, you can release the product to the market because all online and headline measurements that are taken to support immediate release are available. This can be challenging for regulatory and also data processing reasons. You have a lot of data that you need to process in order to be able to get your release documentation. But it is possible and it will in future reduce the amount of material in storage. Continuous manufacturing has many advantages. You can process hundreds of kilograms per day in a very small unit, which gives you a huge advantage by reducing the physical footprint of the plant. Take for example a continuous blender. It can be as small as just 20 centimeters in diameter and like 50 centimeters long and would allow a throughput of 100 kilograms per hour. A batch blender on the other side is sometimes very large, up to a few meters in height. Also, continuous manufacturing equipment is usually designed through the utilization of the quality by design approach, meaning that during the design process, critical process parameters, as well as critical quality attributes of the product are considered. So you know much more in advance. It's not just trial and error. We know much more about the product and process. Yet, of course, on the other side, we also need to study the process in more detail. Also, continuous manufacturing gives you a lot more flexibility with regard to the scale. For example, if you have a continuous manufacturing plant with a throughput of, let's say, 30 kilograms an hour, then you run, for example, eight hours. And that's okay for your product demand at that time. If later the demand increases, you need double the of your production. You can increase the throughput by running at a higher speed for a longer duration 
That gives you a huge advantage with regard to flexibility during scale-up and development. Batch equipment does not work that way. A batch blender or a batch granulator have to have a certain fill level in order to function correctly. They cannot be operated almost empty to achieve good quality. So you need smaller equipment. And scale-up means you need to move from one size piece of equipment to the next. This transfer can be at times very challenging. With continuous equipment, you would have the ability to run with lower throughput for a short time during development, perhaps several kgs, or at high speed for a long time, so producing in the range of hundreds of kgs. As mentioned, you do not need to store material between production steps. This has two major advantages. Firstly, you reduce the amount of capital that you have tied up in storage. Considering the price of some APIs, this can be really significant. Secondly, you have the reduction in floor space, not only because the equipment is smaller, as I said, but also because you have less material in storage. Depending on the storage conditions, this is also reducing the operational cost. Continuous manufacturing is faster. And this is not only because the material goes through all production steps without storage breaks. It's also an inherent function of the equipment and the process intensification that takes place. For example, if you look into drying, this is a process that can take hours, sometimes even days. With continuous manufacturing processes, the usual residence time of a particle inside a continuous dryer is in the range of a few seconds in a spray dryer or several minutes in a fluidized bed dryer, or can be maybe up to 20 minutes in a continuous powder bed dryer. But it's not hours, and it's certainly not days. In addition, keeping in mind that this is not the only advantage. Shorter residence time also means that you expose your material to less stress, meaning less exposure to heat, and shear forces, so there is a lower risk for attrition, temperature or shear-induced degeneration, etc. Therefore, you not only reduce the production time, but you also reduce a whole set of other risks altogether. The drying process is just one example. You will hear more about advantages of other processes in a later chapter. But like with every new technology, continuous manufacturing also comes with its challenges. There is usually a need for dedicated equipment. You have your plant and you produce certain products with it, maybe only two or three products. But it's very specialized equipment. As mentioned before, you specifically design your equipment to your product, so the flexibility is lower compared to a multi-purpose batch plant. There's also the cleaning. Cleaning is more challenging in continuous manufacturing because the equipment is smaller, so it's less accessible. Everything is connected. For example, the crystallization unit is connected to the continuous filtration and this is then again connected to the drying unit and so on. In addition to the process units, you need to clean all the interfaces for automated material transport between the unit operations. So there are a lot of small edges that sometimes require manual cleaning. What is different and therefore in the beginning more challenging are the regulatory aspects. Continuous manufacturing does not allow for this natural batch definition. In batch manufacturing this aspect is clear. Everything that is processed together at once in one piece of equipment is one batch. In continuous manufacturing, theoretically, the batch could be infinite in size if you never stop the production run. Even if this is an over-exaggeration, the batches could still be much bigger than in batch manufacturing. But you can also decide how much material is in one batch. You need to consider the risk that something is wrong with the batch, so you need to discard it or call it back versus the tests you need to release a batch and other effects that you need to consider. This makes it more complex. Additionally, some of the technology might be really new and the personnel from the regulatory agencies might not be well acquainted with its function. 
This may also apply to you, because this might be the first product to be released using a continuous production concept. This might make the filing process initially more complicated. What also is challenging, or at times can be challenging, are the material attributes. Because the material, the powder, needs to be free-flowing, or at least well-flowing. You can learn in another course that that's not always easy, and that there are solutions if your material is not 100% the way it should be. But still, material properties can be challenging for continuous manufacturing processes. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I hope you enjoyed this chapter. We see each other soon for the next chapter.